Hi, my name is Vijay Virapan from the University of North Texas. In this video, I'm going to show you a new technique called keel pedal incision method to perform genetic crossing or artificial hybridization in Medicago truncatula R108 ecotype. Various genetic crossing techniques in Medicago truncatula differ based on the methods of dissecting the unopened flower bud to access the internal floral organs to perform emasculation and cross-pollination. Unlike in other methods, using the keel pedal incision method, we do not make any cut on the standard pedal, rather make a gentle incision on the keel pedal of the unopened flower bed to perform genetic crossing. Using the keel pedal incision method, we usually get greater than 80% success rate, not only in R18 ecotype, but also in other ecotypes including Gemalong A17 and A20. Here you can see approximately 3 months old Medicago truncatula R108 ecotype plants at the peak flowering stage. It is important to know the flower structure and anatomy of internal floral organs to perform successful crosses in Medicago. Medicago truncatula flowers are hermaphrodite in which both male and female reproductive organs are present inside the same flower on the same plant. Let's take a look at the flower structure and the anatomy of Medicago truncatula flower. What you're seeing here is an unopened R18 flower bud showing the external flower structures. The pedicel is at the base of the flower on the left in the image which holds the flower. You can also see a lobed green calyx and a large standard petal which covers the internal floral organs. To visualize the internal floral organs, here you can see a dissected flower bud. Standard petal is outside of the flower. Underneath the standard petal are two small wing petals. Also, you can see a fused, relatively large keel petal which covers both female organ stigma and male organ anthers. In the absence of any intervention, the anthers grow closer to the stigma. Upon maturity, rupture and deposit pollen grains on the surface of the stigma which results in self-pollination. This flower is suitable to use as a female in a genetic cross because the pollen has not yet matured and thus self-pollination has not yet happened. To perform genetic crossing or artificial cross-pollination, the anthers must be removed before they reach maturity. Mature pollen grains will be collected from the male parent as a pollen donor and then deposited on the surface of the stigma to promote cross-pollination. I hope now you are all ready to see the genetic crossing using the keel incision method in Medicago truncatula R18 ecotype. Because Medicago flowers are so small, the genetic crosses are performed under the dissecting microscope similar to this. Grow healthy Medicago plants in medium sized cups like this one so that it is easy to handle the plants while performing crosses under the dissecting microscope. Before I start showing the genetic crossing using the keel incision method, let me outline the major steps. Select an optimal unopened flower bud as a female and mount it on a dissecting microscope stage. Push the standard pedal upwards using fine forceps from the opening side of the standard pedal to visualize the underlying keel pedal. Make an incision on the keel petal from the bottom one third of the flower bud along the central line to dissect the flower bud. Push the incised keel petal upwards to see the internal floral organs, stigma and anthers. Medicago flower contains eight anthers and remove all the anthers completely using fine forceps tips. And then collect mature pollen grains from the male donor and deposit onto the stigma surface with forceps. Finally, close the flower bud to cover the internal floral organs to prevent pollen from dislodging and desiccation of internal floral organs. Here you can see Medicago truncatural flowers from various developmental stages. Among all, flower C is the optimal flower bud 
to serve as a female because it is neither immature nor too old. Immature flowers may not be ready for pollination, whereas in the flowers that are too old, the anthers might have already ruptured and self-pollinated the flower. In this plant, let us go ahead and select the flower bud in the middle as a female to perform anther removal and artificial cross-pollination. Before mounting on a microscope stage, remove all the leaves, shoots, flowers and parts that are closer to the selected female flower bud, leaving only the adjacent trifoliate leaf. Mount the flower bud on its side on the dissecting microscope stage in such a way that the tip of the standard petal facing towards the base of the microscope whereas the opening side of the standard petal facing towards the person who performs crossing. And then secure the flower bud by placing a piece of cellophane tape on the pedestal at the base of the flower. Here is the mounted flower bud under the dissecting microscope. To visualize the keel petal, hold the flower bud by placing a forceps on calyx. Insert another forceps under the standard petal from its opening side and push the standard petal upwards. Now you can clearly see the keel petal under the standard petal. To open the flower bud, tap gently on the keel petal at the bottom one third of the flower bud. And then make an incision along the center line on the keel petal all the way to the end using a sharp scalpel tip. Using forceps tips, push the cut keel petal along with the standard petal upwards to visualize anthers and stigma. To remove the anthers, use the fine forceps tips and gently push out the anthers from the sexual column. During removing anthers, make sure that you don't rupture the anthers to release pollen grains accidentally on the surface of the stigma, which could cause self-pollination. Let's take a look at the Medicago flowers from various developmental stages again to select an optimal male flower. Among all these flowers, flower E is the best choice to use as a pollen donor. Flower D is too young, might have immature anthers, whereas in flower F there may not be enough pollen grains to pollinate the emasculated flower bud because the flower F has already been triggered and once triggered pollen can come off the flower. To perform cross-pollination, collect flowers as pollen donors from a male parent at an optimal stage. Here you can see an optimal stage flower uh, that I'm going to use it as a pollen donor. Remove the standard petal gently and expose the anthers by pushing out the sexual column from the keel petal. Here you can see the sexual column exposed from the male flower showing a tuft of pollen on the anthers. This indicates that the anthers are matured and release the pollen grains already. And also you can see the tuft of pollen grains spilling from the tip of the sexual column.
To deposit the pollen grains on the stigma surface of the emasculated female flower bud, place the tip of the sexual column carrying already ruptured mature anthers with pollen grains onto the stigma surface and then gently scrub multiple times by wiggling. After this, you can see a tuft of pollen grains deposited on the surface of the stigma tip of the female flower. After depositing ample pollen grains on the surface of the stigma of an emasculated female flower bud, close the flower bud by gently pushing and rubbing on top of the standard petal to cover the underlying wing petal, keel petal and stigma completely. Flowers that are handled carefully and not damaged can easily close completely by forming a pouch around the stigma and look similar to the unopened flower bud before genetic crossing. This pouch prevents pollen dislodging from stigma during any mechanical movements and also protecting stigma and pollen from desiccation. After closing the flower bud, remove the cellophane tape that was placed under the flower bud gently. Label the pollinated flower by placing a folded sticky tape with the name of the male and female parents and the date of crossing just under the pollinated flower. Avoid covering the artificially cross pollinated flower bud using a transparent tape or wraps which could promote fungus growth that results in flower decay and flower drop. Approximately three days after genetic crossing, flowers from successful crosses start curling upwards as shown in panel A. In contrast, flowers from unsuccessful crosses fall off from the pedicel approximately two days after the artificial cross-pollination. Flowers from successful crosses continue to develop when parts develop into medium size, wrap the parts using microperforated polythene sheets to prevent falling of parts once they reach maturity. Upon maturity, parts turn yellow and finally become brown in color. Collect the brown colored parts after it falls off from the plant naturally. Then air dry the parts at the room temperature for one week and store the parts for further use. In this video, I have shown you how to perform genetic crossing using the new technique, the keel petal incision method in Medicago truncatula R108 eukotype. Also, I have demonstrated you the successful use of the keel petal incision method to perform back crossing of Medicago truncatula TNT1 insertion mutants into the wild type R108 eukotype. The keel petal incision method is less invasive and unlike in other methods, it does not involve any cutting on the standard petal. Rather, a gentle incision is made from the bottom one third of the flower bud along the central line of the keel petal to perform emasculation and cross pollination. When using the keel petal incision method, it is not necessary to incubate the cross pollinated flower bud in humidified containers to improve the success rates of crossing. Using the keel petal incision method, we routinely get greater than 80% success rates in R108 ecotype, even when the crosses were performed by researchers with less experience, including the undergraduate and graduate students. Also, the keel petal incision method works with equal efficiencies in other ecotypes, including the Gemalong A17 and A20. Thank you for watching this video and good luck with your genetic crosses.